And where else do you get great views like that of aircraft movements? Well, that's a very good question. Back in the late 70s, at the end of the terminal decline of East London shipping industry, the London Docklands Development Corporation was born to deliver large-scale regeneration to the Docklands area. As part of this regeneration, Sir Philip Beck and John Molam of the construction firm agreed that in order to support a modernisation of East London, a new airport was required to leverage the expected windfall that London's new financial district would bring. Fast forward to 1987, the Thatcher era was in full swing, as was the yuppie generation. People had money to spend. In all its hypnotic majesty. Oh, sounds great. Mm. We're all going on a Beano to Margate next <laughs> And the average red Porsche driver had a new place to hang out. With fast regular shuttles to all of Europe's financial hotspots, the city became a firm favourite of the city slicker. Welcome to London City Airport and to today's video. All I needed was a boarding pass. Today's flight sees us testing out Swiss International Airlines from here to Zurich on an Airbus A220. There's no time to indulge in fine Swiss exports, such as the delicious cheese fondue, as I need to tell you about the total chaos of Lufthansa's check-in desk with just one person on duty. But we can listen to some fine Alphorn music, as I let you know that due to the Lufthansa group not allowing app check-in and none of the airport check-in machines working, it was down to hundreds of passengers seeking a boarding card. People like me, who never check a bag in. Online check-in confirmation with Lufthansa Group, as it turns out, is not the same as online check-in. With me so far? Great. Because it still remains a mystery to me, but rather than listening to me prattle on about my lousy check-in and security experience, let's just put it down to the challenges of being a Neil. All Neils just know. Let's get to the good stuff and why people like me fly from London City Airport. So you see, I knew there was a reason why I chose London City Airport after all. And it's this. So the views are just almost unparalleled. And you get to see like the so you get to see the aircraft landing, you get to see them taking off. It's really, really good. And it's a nice clear morning today as you can see. So this is what London City Airport as a nav geek is all about. There is just literally yards between you and the arriving aircraft. Where else do you get great views like that of aircraft movements? And I'm not the only person with a camera this morning, let me tell you. Even the business travellers are interested in this sort of thing. There's a few of them with cameras just getting the takeoffs and the landings. It is great, it really is. This is what travelling through London City is all about. You'd think the amount of flights I get, I wouldn't get upset about stuff like security anymore, would you? The reason I pay for business class is... Let's just watch this go. So as I was saying, the reason I pay for business class is to get that better experience. It, that's what it's all about to me. You know, it soon mounts up. I think this flight this morning down to Zurich cost an extra £75. And I'll cover what we get for that £75 later in the video because it's not the full business class experience, as I'll explain. But these amounts, you know, £75 here, £100 there to upgrade, it soon mounts up and... One of the reasons I pay it is to get just that simpler, more enhanced experience. And yet, some days it just doesn't work out. Like the airport this morning, you know. It was just rubbish. Frankly, it was rubbish. There's no other way to explain it. The whole check-in security experience was just not up to scratch for an airport that markets itself as being simple to use. It would have been easier to go through Heathrow. And actually, had I used Heathrow, I would have actually got access to the Lufthansa lounge, which you don't get here, you literally have to pay for everything. Boarding time comes and is done efficiently with business class passengers boarding first, a quick walk from the terminal, and I'm settled in my row three seats on what looks to be a very quiet flight today.
My first flight on an Airbus 220 is going well so far. The cabin is comfortable and as usual in business class, the seat next to you is blocked. Particularly impressed with these small overhead screens showing useful information about the flight, including the flight maps that you'd normally see on much larger long-haul aircraft, and with an on-time, well, not pushback as the aircraft drives straight out onto a very short taxiway to the runway. Another benefit of flying from this very happy airport. This flight of about 90 minutes sees us cruising at a lofty 41,000 feet on this five-year-old aircraft. You all told me that you don't like to watch full-length takeoff videos, but I've left this one in as it's one of the characteristics flying from this airport. Aircraft take a steep ascent and descent given the high-rise buildings around us. Only a small number of aircraft types are certified to fly in and out of LCY as a result. So with that, I'll leave you to enjoy the steep ascent. It is noticeable and it's worth seeing. British Airways wholly owned subsidiary City Flyer operates a large fleet of Embraer regional aircraft from here at London City. You'll see a video soon as I tested out this service from Ibiza in the Balearic Islands back to here at London City. And as we climb out of London on our way to Switzerland, now feels like the right time to tell you about my new website, momentsinthesky.com. On my new website, you can see a growing range of blogs of places that I've visited, some of my favorite aviation photography, as well as my shop, where you can buy your favorite merchandise. Back to the flight, as the business class curtain comes across, breakfast service begins. Today, an excellent selection of cheese omelette, stuffed tomato and a delicious tomato sauce. On the side, we have strawberry yogurt, croissant and some Swiss cheese. This is accompanied with endless coffee, orange juice and the traditional Swiss chocolate. With a wonderfully clear morning in the sky, we see a few different airports and other sites as we fly comfortably down to Zurich. Missing in action from my last two videos, but now back is toilet cam. And I must say today's toilet is very well fitted out and feels very modern. Beginning our descent into Zurich, we get to see those famous mountains that were designed and built by Toblerone. Or was it the other way around? I don't know, I just love Toblerone. Well, who doesn't? 
As always, it's a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. It's people like James, Joe, Kieran, and every one of my great supporters who helps me to bring these videos to you month in, month out. Huge thanks to you all. I'll leave you to enjoy a sunny and clear day into Zurich before receiving a separate business class bus to take us back to the terminal. A warm welcome from Swiss Immigration before swiftly boarding my connecting flight down to Parma in the Balearic Islands, and you'll see that too in a future video. All in all, a very enjoyable experience today with Swiss, and one that I would highly recommend. For now though, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Liebe Gäste, bitte bleiben Sie angeschnallt sitzen, bis das Anschnallzeichen ausgeschaltet wird. Öffnen Sie die Gepäckablagen vorsichtig, da Gegenstände herausfallen könnten. Wir hoffen, dass Ihnen dieser Flug mit uns gefallen hat und würden uns freuen.